there and welcome back to Japan where today I'm going to be listening to um, a little bit more of Karen Girls. Now I just have to queue up the video because I just realized I didn't open it before I got this started. There it is, it's all ready to go now. Um, but Karen Girls, if you don't know, which would be surprising, um, considering that a lot of the people on this channel have seen us go through every single Baby Metal song and Sakura Gakuin and all this stuff prior to Baby Metal. Karen Girls is interesting because Karen Girls is the first um, notable um, group or you know, sort of professionally released group that came from the whole baby metal stable in the um, baby metal as you might know hopefully from this channel um, is a subunit of Sakura Gakuin who were like a schoolgirl idol group and then before that the lead singer of baby metal Sue was in this group Karen Girls who were supposed to be like the new perfume or like the baby sister to perfume. Um, but you know, like I said, this is all ancient history now, but it does add a really interesting context. Now we listened to one Karen Girls song before, which was uh, Over the Future. And that was like their most popular one. Uh, from everything that we can see and you know this group apparently did some theme tunes for anime so I don't know if uh, this one is one of those or not but the one we're listening to now is My Wings uh, which appears from at least views at least to be the second most popular Karen Girls song so um, my general feeling on the one that we heard before was that it was you know it, it was very twee it was very sort of young girl group sort of pop thing but it had a real sort of sense of quality. I mean, even I think James was kind of agreeing. It was it was well written. It had a good sort of fun chorus and everything. And the video was hilariously tacky, but in a really charming way. You know, them sort of teleporting weirdly and flying boxes. It was the first video we've seen with flying boxes, and now we've started realizing there's flying boxes everywhere. It's like the cube Illuminati, the cube Cubinati. No, no triangles, just flying boxes. Anyway, enough waffle, we're going to listen to My Wings by per uh, by Perfume, <gasps> by Karen Girls, and let's see what we think afterwards. <clears throat> nice. <laughs> Alright, fairly straight shoot in the beginning. What's going to happen? That bass sound is so early 90s. The imagery is very strong there, isn't it? <laughs> This does sound like an anime theme tune sort of chorus. I can totally imagine like Shimakawa Mikuni singing this song. It has that kind of feel. Yeah, what's with that bass? I'm always really amazed at the, all, like, all the choreography and everything that they learn at this age. Because they were still quite young when they did this. Chorus actually relatively catchy. I think it's more of a notable chorus for just how long it is, which is quite commonplace in like J pop, especially anime theme tune choruses. They have many phases, it's not just repeating the same thing. We're getting very intense here for the bridge. 
I do like the string stuff. The strings have got a good sound. Oh, of course, of course. We, we have to have the over-the-top guitar solo. It just wouldn't be like anime-style J-pop without an over-the-top guitar solo. They held that last shot for a straight long time. At the end, she looked like she was going, uh, are we done? That weird tone bass is actually doing some really interesting things underneath this. I suggest if you listen to it back, have a little listen to some of the cool little bass movements in there. Alrighty, seven seconds to go, what's gonna happen? They're gonna look at an exploding uh, bedding shop. Okay, I did say bedding, not betting. Uh, so, Alright, <coughs> that, as before, as I've said with them, uh, Over the Future with Sakura Gakuen, that was a lot better than it had any right to be, which is kind of nice, you know, I mean, uh, it's refreshing. Um, I think it's interesting that you listen to a lot of people when they talk about this sort of music, and um, I mean, I, I, I do understand there's a lot of sort of cynicism, a lot of people that you know, just sort of disregard this type of music, and I must admit, I wouldn't even be sort of moved towards listening to this sort of thing if it hadn't been recommended to you guys after listening to Babe Metal and everything, and yet when I do listen to it, you kind of come out of the other end always sort of thinking, well, this is a lot better than you could easily dismiss it from being. Now, um, obviously the, the, the thing which, um, I guess the, the, the tonal thing which always sort of comes across as maybe overly twee, is you have those sort of, you know, I mean, I know you've got like a group of like, I think they were 12 at the time this came out, like 12 year old girls singing together over a song that has a poppy beat. You've got like notes are being accented by like a little bell sound, ding, 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 stuff like that. You've got um, a lot of very twee things in there. I do get that, but the overall feeling is of something quite innocent, which then if you look at it for what it actually is, is very well written. Like I say, that chorus is huge. I mean, you think about a lot of, uh, I'm gonna draw this comparison because I do think this is important to do because you get a lot of musical snobbery out there, um, which is something that I try to avoid on this channel. I mean, we, we I've, I mean, I myself have worked in the music industry in many different ways for quite a long time. And the one thing you always come across is snobs. Now, if you take like a lot of people's beloved um, sort of bands, um, you know, like sort of the classic metal bands and stuff like that. And you take apart like one of their choruses, uh, like for one of their most famous songs, you'll probably, you know, find four, maybe six chords in it. Um, and, you know, people are absolutely fine with that and saying that sort of classic, oh, this is really well written music because it's got this riff and this solo, etc., etc. And you take something like this, which like I say, a lot of people would dismiss, that's a, it's got a really well written chorus. Yeah, it comes across sounding twee, but it delivers it really well. That chorus does not get boring. It's a, it's interesting. There's virtually no repetition in the chorus. There is a slight repetition the first couple of times around, just where it's sort of cementing a bit of a hook. But even there, you notice that the, the like the the balance between the, the tune and the bass line slightly shifts. And the, you know, there's just a lot of things that keep that chorus really interesting. Um, most of the rest of the songs sort of following your fairly standard, um, you know, pop thing. It's got a slightly funky beat. Um, the bass, like I say, goes into that weird sort of uh, old school 90s uh, MIDI disco synth bass thing kind of thing, which just sounds a little bit cringy at points. But if you listen to what the bass is doing, especially when it goes into the chorus and it sinks away into being sort of lower register and you're not hearing the weird tone so much, but just like the actual, the bass of it, um, it becomes actually one of the best parts of the songs and it, song and it really holds it together. And that movement from the bass going for a slightly, from a slightly higher tone in the verses down to a lower tone in the chorus actually is part of the reason, part of the development because um, 
this is commonly used technique here with sort of good musical arrangers, is that in the chorus, usually the notes will sort of move up, you know, you usually get slightly higher notes, everything sounds a little bit higher. And to balance that out so this whole song doesn't start to sound thin, the baser elements of the song will usually go down. So, um, you know, in choruses, you know, everything moves, you know, the melodies will move up, basses usually move down, and that gives you room to put something in the middle to thicken it out. In rock, it would be more of an intense guitar or something like that, you know, more of a roaring, you know, rock guitar. Or in the case of something like this, you'd have maybe a bit more synth or a bit more of the beat will come in, or maybe just more backing vocals. You know, there's all those kinds of things. Like I said, there's lots of little um, cute sounds in this, like I said, a little bell thing, some like little twiddling synths going all over the place quite lightly. But it is quite a full sounding song. It's nicely written, um, nicely arranged. The production is quite cringy, but in a, in a totally justifiable way, considering what we are listening to. Um, and I, I come up with this comparison, uh, well, not so much a comparison, but this example that I use when uh, we're looking at something like this, because I, I am perfectly aware that this is not marketed at me. This is not marketed at me, and it's probably not marketed at the majority of people who watch this channel. Although we have a vested interest in this because obviously it's connected to something that a lot of us do listen to uh, and connected very strongly. So the example I usually use for something like this is if I have kids, thank God I don't, if I had kids, would I be happy for them to listen to this given that this is more marketed to their age group? Hell yes, I would be very happy for them to listen to this. Like I say, it, it shows you sort of good writing you know, um, gets you used to listening to songs that have like nice expansive choruses with like lots of melodic uh, development and progression. It has a uh, you know, sort of funky fun B. It has just a lot that you can take out of it. But, you know, there's a lot of things that you can get from it. And yet at the same time, it's presented in such a simple, harmless and sweet little innocent package that you know, it's it's welcoming. So yeah, I think for the audience for which this is designed, I think it's a really, really good thing. I think it's it's brilliant because it just, it again, I've said this before, you can approach this kind of music, which is aimed at a much younger uh, age group. You can approach it in a really baby shark kind of way and just do something which has four chords, high repetition, and no real imagination to it, but just is annoying and catchy, and therefore it's apparently great for kids. Or you can approach something like this. I know the intention of this and Baby Shark is very different, but um, you know you can approach it with something like this, where it's like kids' music, which really you know it's just equally accessible to them. Might not be as immediately catchy and annoying, but I think even for a child, it would be more fulfilling, more of a fulfilling listen, something that they can listen to more times. You know, I can't imagine anyone listening to Baby Shark more than once without their brain exploding. Um, but this, you know, you definitely could because there's a lot of music going on. Um, and kudos as always, so I know at this age the girls would have very little input um, and I'm sure it's people pressing thumbs down on this video right now just because I said that. I'm not a hater, don't worry. But I'm sure they'd have very minimal input in this but it is great to, like I say, see all of the complicated things they've learned. You know, they've sung the song nicely, they've done those really sort of complicated choreography. Yeah, so this is just all round a, a, a fulfilling experience I'd say. I enjoyed it and I am... Uh, gonna leave it at that <laughs> so anyway for now from Japan thank you so much for tuning in and uh, as always get in the comments tell us what you think give us suggestions maybe give me some more background like I said I know about music but and I know a bit about how the industry works but when it comes to the artists you guys often know a lot more than I do so give me context tell me things that I might not know or maybe confirm thing that I've said get involved in the cons in the discussion because you have just as much right to school me as I do to preach about my opinions. So for now, from Japan, ciao ciao. Thanks for watching. Feel free to check out more of our hundreds of videos we've got online on this channel right now, or get involved in the discussion with us at the many social media links we've got in the description below, where you can suggest new videos and eyes for us to check out on the channel. Or you can just do the usual YouTube stuff and you know, comment, like, subscribe. You know how this works by now.